Welcome back. As you may have noticed, some of the moves we generate are actually illegal. That's because in chess, a player cannot make any move that leaves their king in check. We say that a player is in check if their king can be captured on the opponent's next move. Let's take a look at a few examples. In this state, if I click on the white king, the game shows me seven different positions that I can move it to. But two of these moves are actually illegal. That's because they would leave the white king in check. The black bishop would be able to capture it on the very next turn. Similarly, if I try to move the white rook, I have many options, but most of them would place the king in check and are therefore not legal. The crossed out moves would allow the black rook to capture the white king on the next turn. Here is another state. This time white is already in check. The black queen is threatening it. But the same rule applies. A player cannot make any move that leaves their king in check. So white must get out of check somehow. There are three ways to do that. Either move the king to a square where it cannot be captured next turn, move another piece in between the threatening piece and the king, or capture the threatening piece. All other moves are illegal. Checkmate happens when a player is in check and cannot make any legal moves to get out of it. In this example, white is in checkmate and has lost the game. The plan for this video is to write code that can detect check and use it to filter out any illegal moves. Later, we will also use that code to handle checkmate and stalemate. Okay, let's begin by opening the piece class in the chess logic project. Here, we'll add a virtual method called can capture opponent king. It returns true if and only if this piece can capture the opponent's king. This will never happen in an actual game, but we'll use it behind the scenes to detect check in a moment. We can write a default implementation here, which works for most pieces. It generates all moves the piece can make, disregarding whether it leaves the player in check. Then we check if any of these moves captures the opponent king. To do that, we grab the piece at the move's 2 position, and check if it's a king. It's not necessary to check if the king belongs to the opponent. That's because get moves will never generate a move that captures a piece of the same color. Next, let's open the pawn class. The default implementation of can capture opponent king would work for this piece. But it doesn't feel right to check all the moves since pawns can only capture diagonally. So let's override the method here. And check only if a diagonal move would capture the opponent's king.
We also need to open the King class. Here, I'm also going to overwrite can capture opponent king. I do this because we'll add casting moves here later. Casting moves cannot capture any pieces, so I don't want to include them in this check. Instead, let's just generate the move positions. and check if the opponent's king is in any of them. For the bishop, knight, rook and queen, the default implementation will be just fine. Now we can write a method that detects if a player is in check. I think it makes sense to put it inside the board class. We start with a helper method called piece positions which returns all non-empty positions. It loops through all positions. And returns only the non-empty ones. We also need a convenient way to get all positions containing a piece of a certain color. With piece positions, that's quite easy. We just call that method. And use where to pick only the positions containing the right colored pieces. All right, now everything is set up for us to write the isInCheck method. It takes a player as parameter and returns true if and only if that player's king is in check. To do that, we simply check if any of the opponent's pieces can capture the given player's king. First, Let's get the positions of the opponent's pieces. Then we check if any of them can capture the player's king. So we get the opponent piece. And then call its can capture opponent king method. Passing in the position of the piece and the board. That's actually it. In the final part of this video, we'll use is in check to filter out any moves which leave the current player's king in check. To achieve this, we need a way to copy the board itself. First, 
we create a new empty board. Then we loop over all positions containing a piece. and copy the pieces into the new board. After the loop, we return the copy. All right, now we have everything we need. So let's go ahead and open the move class. Here we'll add a virtual isLegal method. It should return true if and only if executing this move does not leave the current player's king in check. But how can we tell if the move results in check when it's made? We can actually do that using only methods we have written already. Let me explain how. To find out if a move is legal, we make a copy of the board and execute the move on the copy. The move is legal if and only if the moving player's king is not in check after that. In this example, the white king is not in check because none of the black pieces are in position to capture it. Therefore, we can conclude that the given move is in fact legal. The copy of the board will never be shown to the players. It only exists behind the scenes for a split second. All right, we only need four lines of code to implement this. First, we get the moving player by checking the color of the piece that will move. Then we copy the board using the copy method. Execute the move on the copy. And return true if the player's king is not in check after the move. This code is simple and correct, but it's not the most efficient implementation. Don't worry, there won't be any sort of delay using this code. But if we decide to add computer-controlled players, then it might be worth it to find a faster and more complicated solution. Why did I make this method virtual? This default implementation is perfect for the normal move, but when we add Castly moves later, there are a few additional conditions we must check for. All right, now there's only one thing left to do. In the game state class, we locate the legal moves for peace method. This method should only return moves that do not leave the king in check. So we cannot just return the result of get moves. Let's instead store them in a variable called move candidates. And only return the legal ones. Now only legal moves should be possible. Here's the state I showed you earlier, where white is already in check. If I click on the king, the game now only shows me the four legal moves it can make. For the rook, the only legal move places it between the black queen and the white king. And for the knight, 
The only legal move captures the black queen. Awesome. In the next part, we'll detect when the game ends, either because of checkmate or stalemate. See you then.